Welcome to worship on this New Year's Eve here at St. John's Lutheran Church in Warrenton, Texas, part of Shared Lutheran Ministries of Fayette County. Before we begin our worship, a couple of announcements. First, the Shared Lutheran Ministries office will be closed tomorrow in observance of New Year's Day. Quilters will gather on Thursday at 10 a.m. in Fayetteville. Breakfast Bible study at John Birkeland's Party Barn will take place Saturday at 8 a.m. And next Sunday, there will be Sunday school at 3 p.m. at Reutersville. With those announcements being shared, we begin our worship. Lord God, we have traveled the Advent Road. We have worshiped at the manger, and now we move forward. We have seen and heard and tasted the wonder of your love. Be with us as we leave the stable to bring your love to the world, confident that you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. You know us, Lord. Christmas was so five minutes ago. We are ready to be looking forward to other things, back to school and work, starting new projects, revving up for the busyness that we do. Help us to remember that your love is truly with us. We leave the manger to bring that love to our classmates, our co-workers, and to every person that we meet. Hear these words of assurance. God's mercy endures forever. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. The angels of God proclaim to us the birth of hope and joy and peace. For the sake of the Savior, who is Christ the Lord, who lived and died and rose for us, God forgives us all our sins and delights to call us beloved children. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2, 6, and 7. The prophet Isaiah foretells the coming of the Savior. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The birth of Jesus takes place in Bethlehem. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. In our Gospel reading today, the Gospel of Mark does not begin with the story of Jesus' birth, but with the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. You will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him and the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the good news for us today, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, friends, grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Every family, every nation, every community has an origin story a story about the way they form together, a way that goes back to the very beginning of who they are and shapes the idea of who they are as a people. 
This is true for us in the Kinswater household as well, but it's more of a birth story. Every once in a while, our girls, Emma and Lily, who are eight years old now, will say, tell us again about the day that we were born. And now, depending on who is recounting the story, you get it from a little bit of a different view. If it's me telling the story, then I say, well, it was a routine doctor's appointment that we were going to, and they said, your blood pressure is a little high. How about we have children today? And I thought to myself, nope, I am not ready to have babies today. But the doctor knew we would be ready and knew we were in good hands. So we went to the hospital and it took five whole hours of waiting before we could meet you. But once you were born, I got to see your little face and hear your screeching cry for the very first time before you were taken down the hall so they could check you out a little bit more. It was beautiful, and we were so glad, and our family was finally complete. Now, if Matt is telling the story, he would say, you were so loud when you were born. I couldn't even believe it. You were the loudest children in the entire hospital. And then we got to take you down to the NICU or to the area where they would check you out. Mom was still back in the operating room, making sure that she was okay, but I got to go with you and meet you and hold you and see that you were mine. It was a beautiful day. And then a little bit later, this is still Matt's version of the story, I got to introduce your mom to you once again in the NICU. And you know what she did? The very first thing she did when she met your doctor, the doctor that delivered you, she threw up. You see the anesthesia was still working through her body, and so she met him, she shook his hand, and then she threw up in the bag that they had given her. I always say, hey Matt, you can omit that part of the story. That part is not important. If it's my mom and dad, Gigi and Pop Pop, telling the story, they would tell the story in a way that reminds them that all traffic laws, especially speeding laws, are off the charts if your grandchildren are being born. They sped as fast as they could all the way from LaGrange to Cyprus because they simply had to be there before you were born. And they were, and they met you right as you came into the world. Now, if it's Barb and Chuck or your Mimi and granddad telling the story, they'd tell it in the most exciting way. You see, Barb had just taken Chuck, Mimi had just taken granddad, to have surgery. And she left there at the operating facility because she had to meet you. She called a friend of hers to pick you up, to pick him up. But in the haste of getting to know you, she forgot and she took all of his clothes with her and his glasses and all of his possessions. And so he had to go home in an operating gown after his procedure. But Mimi made it on time, and she got to meet you. It's the same story, the origin story of Emma and Lily Kinswater, told from different angles, from different views. As I read our gospel story today, it makes me think of these origin stories, or stories of birth. In all four gospels, we hear a different version of the advent or the arrival of Jesus. Each story is an origin story of the Savior of the world, the one we follow as Jesus the Christ. Perhaps the most familiar of these is in the Gospel of Luke. It starts, In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. Joseph and Mary went to the city of David called Bethlehem. While they were there, Mary gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for him in the end. Now there were shepherds milling about in the neighborhood, and then an angel told them that the Savior of the world was going to be born, and that they would go and follow the newborn king. Not only the shepherds, but the sheep and all the barnyard animals came to, to see the birth of Jesus. Now, the Gospel of Matthew tells the story from a different version. It begins with kind of an Ancestry.com list of divine lineage, linking Jesus all the way back to David. It says, then, on account of this royal lineage, 
wise ones from the east, the Magi, followed a wild star and brought him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And then the wise ones were warned by um, an angel to go home by a different road so as not to lead Herod to the newborn king. The Gospel of John tells the story in a different way altogether. In John's rendition, the birth of Jesus takes us back to the very beginning, to the birth of creation in Genesis. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Word became flesh and lived among us. From His fullness we received grace upon grace. The law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus, the light of the world. Now, the Gospel of Mark is probably the oddest of all the birth narratives. It fast forwards all the way until Jesus is almost 30 years old, the contemporary of John the Baptist. His gospel, his story of Christ and the world begins like this. He says, this is the beginning of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. He links John the Baptist to the prophet Isaiah, the one that says, I am sending a messenger who will prepare the way of the Lord. So John, the baptizer, appears in the wilderness, clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, eating locusts and wild honey. And he tells the people to repent and be baptized, to prepare the way of the Lord. Now, if you notice, most of these items are typically seen within our church. We find them in nativity scenes or in Christmas programs, or perhaps in the candlelight service on Christmas Eve. But I haven't ever seen John the baptizer show up on Christmas Eve or be part of a church's decorations for the season of Advent or Christmas. There's no small figurine of a man that's wearing camel hair with a leather belt, eating wild honey and locusts. It simply doesn't fit into the story the same way, but it's important nonetheless. All four of these gospels are telling the origin story or the birth story of Jesus in a different way. Mark is telling it so that we can see how we connect to the prophets of old, how those promises made in Isaiah are faithfully fulfilled in the gospel message. Luke talks about the mystery of God for all people, even shepherds, for all of creation, even sheep. Matthew talks about the divinity of God, the royal lineage lineage that extends to all nations, even wise ones from the East. And the Gospel of John reminds us that it's the light no darkness can overcome. So it's not only all nations, all creation, it's all of the cosmos that cannot overcome the goodness of our God. The Gospel of Mark tells it in a particular way for a particular reason. It is concise and urgent. It gets straight to the point because John the baptizer knows that the message that Jesus brings is urgent, revolutionary, and big enough to change the world. We hear these origin or birth stories from all four Gospels throughout the season of Advent and into Christmas because we need to remember the revolutionary message that came when Jesus was born into the world. We can follow the message of John the baptizer who is preparing the way of the Lord, even if he doesn't fit simply into our Advent and Christmas messages, because he has something to teach us. He reminds us that we are to repent and to believe, to believe wholeheartedly that Jesus has the power to forgive us of our sins and that Jesus still shows up in our world today. We remember these stories. We remember and retell these origin stories, praying that we might see God show up in the world again so that we might see Jesus come to us here and now. 
Friends, this is the good news for us today and every day. Amen. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we traverse afar Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give thanks for your gener generous offerings that help Shared Lutheran Ministries extend God's good news into all the world. Let us pray. As kings of old brought priceless gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we offer to you the fruits of our labors, praying that these gifts will spread the good news to those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for Christ's light of life to take flesh in the church, the creation, and all people of God. We bring to the manger our longing for the visible unity of the Church of Jesus Christ, that undivided it proclaimed that one whose birth brings good news of glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring to the manger hope for the well-being of creation, that every valley be exalted and every rough place be made plain, so that every living thing may flourish. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
we bring to the manger a vision of the reign of the Prince of Peace that the nations, tribes, and peoples of this world will see and cherish in each other the very image of Christ, whose scepter is mercy and whose judgment is love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring to the manger concern for those who have no place to lay their heads this night, and for those who dwell in the shadow of loneliness, despair, illness, or death, especially Gerald, Joyce, Dennis, Annette, Maureen, Janelda, Ted, and Donna. We come begging that the child for whom there was no room will open the doors of our hearts to the needs of our neighbors and ourself. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring to the manger all people who, like the Holy Family, gather with children in the splendor of this most holy night, that the gift of faith be lavished upon another generation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The congregation may offer prayers aloud or silently at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring to the manger the hopes and dreams of all the years that with Mary and Joseph, angels and archangels, saints and martyrs, loved ones of every time and every place, our prayers and praise join in a common song, unite in heaven and earth in a single peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your outstretched arms, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, the light and life of the world. Amen. We join our voices with all the faithful, praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Receive a benediction these good words from our good God. May the God of hope through Christ our peace and the power of the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching O'er silent flocks by night Behold, throughout the heavens There shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born down in the lonely manger the humble christ was born and god sent us salvation that blessed christmas morn Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. This service has ended. Our service begins. Go in peace. Spread the good news. 
we leave with the joyful message in our hearts and on our lips. Please.